Next guest says we could see some more profit taking from here. Morgan Stanley's Chris Toomey runs one of the highest rated private wealth advisory teams in the country. He joins me here at Post 9. Nice to see you again. I, I was like, this has to be the day. This has to be the day that Chris Toomey is going to sit across from me or next to me and say, you know what? I'm finally turned. Yeah. I'm, I'm bullish this market because there's no other place to be and no other way to see it. And you're no. shaking your head no. No. Why? I'm sorry. Why? I'm, well, I look, I mean, just because you want something or think something should be something isn't what is actually going to happen. And I think if you look at, despite, you know, your previous guests' conversations, S&P is up about 7% year to date. Equal weight's up about 2.5%. That's what the median return is about. You know, we've gone up 25% since the October lows. You know, right now, I think people are saying, you know what, we've gotten here. Maybe I need to take something off the table a little bit. If you look at what's worked really well on the hedge fund side, you go long momentum, which is 75%, the mag seven, and you go short, the small caps, the unprofitables. You look at what's performing in the last week or so, you see China's up about 10%. As you said, Bitcoin's going through the roof. Some of these biotech names are doing well. Unprofitable growth is doing really well. So what you might see is some of these trades unwinding, people starting to take some profits. Mm. And I think what's really interesting is we got a really difficult January number, right? We had a difficult retail sales. We had a difficult CPI, which we can talk about. And the market sold off a little bit. What was interesting was the names that actually did the best were the names that had been doing the best. So you didn't necessarily see people taking profits there. And in reality, those quality names continue to outperform. Okay. Um, almost everything's been going up, right? Over the last month, I'll read it again because I think it's a story that's not getting enough credit and people who are bearish or cautious don't seem to want to mention it. Discretionary stocks are up 7% in the last month. Industrials, the charts looked unbelievable, up 6%. Materials, up 5%. Financials and healthcare, up 4.5% respectively. Tech's only up 3%. Ralph Lauren, up 26%. I got probably 60 stocks in front of me right here, tried and true names in this economy that are hitting 52-week highs or all-time highs over the past week. Not one of them is a mega cap tech stock on my list. Right. What more evidence do you need? Well, look, you've got the, the MAG 7, which is MAG 5, MAG 4. They're up over 35% year to date, right? So, yeah, there was time for them to come down a little bit and for some of these other names to catch up. But I think what's important is looking at the fundamentals, right? So go all the way back to 2022. Market was pricing 150 basis points worth of cuts. Fed was talking about 75 basis points of cuts. We saw 50 basis points in hikes, right? At the start of this year, we had six cuts priced in starting in March. Now we're at three, right? So... Over that time period, we actually had flat earnings in the S&P 500. Everyone talks about the fourth quarter, how we outperformed. No one talks about that. We did, but no one talks about the fact that three months before earnings started, they cut estimates by 8%, right? So this is your son saying, I'm going to get a D in math, and then coming back and saying, I got a C minus, right? This isn't what really is going to drive performance of the S&P 500. But when, 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 when your expectations were that he might get kicked out of the class, and here we are because the economy is super strong, strong enough, um, we have no recession, multiples you could make an argument are justified at these levels because of the economy and the fact that earnings came in better than expected. M most of the naysayer predictions for just have not happened. They with, haven't. With, they haven't happened with regards to price, but they have happened with regards to fundamentals, right? If you look at the S&P 500, up 25% on flat earnings, right? So why is the multiple expanding? We're not cutting rates. And here's the bigger problem, right? If you think about the fact that we aren't going to be cutting rates the way the market's pricing it, what happens, right? You don't need it. Well, no, that, that's, that, that's, that's what we don't need now. But you've got $800 billion worth of corporate debt that is rolling over this year, right? You've got over $1.2 trillion worth of corporate debt rolling over next year, $4 trillion until 2030, and we're right? we're going to get rate cuts. 
we're going to get rate cuts, but when are we going to get them, right? These companies are running out of cash. You look at the consumer. The consumer's got $1.2 trillion worth of debt that they're paying 25% on. So everyone's talking about how great the consumer is. He's just extending. He's extending, waiting for these rate cuts, and these rate cuts are getting pushed back further and further. And as much as Powell would want to cut, he's not because he's concerned about inflation because he's seeing it, right? And because there's precedent. If you look back at the 70s, it's very hard to get this perfectly right with regards to inflation. So would I want to be paying a premium for the market in this environment? Would I want to be bidding up these stocks right now? Not necessarily. So to recap, Chris Toomey says we could see some profit taking in these stocks from here, guys. The S&P is up 7% year to date and up 25% since the October lows. He says he's shorting small caps and unprofitable companies. He said the market is way too far ahead of itself. Scott comes back and says the market is broadening. There are tons of stocks at the new 52-week highs that are not tech. He says in the last month, discretionary stocks are up 7%, industrials are up 6%, materials are up 5%, financial and healthcare is up 4%, and tech is only up 3%. Scott said there's still no recession, the economy is strong, and earnings are continuing to grow so far. There's $4 trillion in corporate debt to roll over by 2030, guys, but the rate cuts should help mitigate some of that. The Fed can't cut rates. They're too scared of inflation right now. They don't want another Paul Volcker mistake and cut too early and reignite all of this and then it just get out of control. But on the flip side, we can't stay too high for too long. So we're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. He does recommend caution. He says he wouldn't be putting any new money to work at these high levels, guys. I think we are kind of a little bit extended. If anything, we're due for a little consolidation, maybe a slight pullback. But if anything, we've seen over all the panels, all the contributors at CNBC, they're all saying buy these pullbacks. Earnings are going to continue, with, well, they should anyway. And AI is just starting and a revolution is starting to begin. Anyway, those are just my thoughts. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Catch you in the next one.